So I have been on a little bit of a hiatus from YouTube for the past month or so because if it wasn't obvious, I'm sort of in the middle of resetting my doll collection, like my shelving units, in preparation for the long-awaited collection showcase video because I don't really have like a doll room. I wish I had a doll room. Like I wish I had the uh, disposable income <laughs> to have a room that was just dolls but regardless of that i still want to do a collection video so i will record that as soon as my shelves are where i want them to be but today actually yesterday i received in the mail this box which contains the entire fourth wave of barbie looks and of course i had to take a break from all that to look at the best barbie collection currently that Mattel is putting out and they came surprisingly quick. I didn't expect to receive them um, yesterday because I ordered them before they were even really available on Mattel Creations. Now I prefer ordering from Amazon because with the Barbie uh, signature subscription you really don't get anything for it. Like the minimum they could do would be like free shipping but they don't offer that. Amazon does though so you didn't I didn't have to pay anything extra to have these shipped to me like I would if I would have waited to have them shipped from Mattel. And Amazon is also a lot quicker with their shipping than Mattel Creations is. So the early window for ordering them on Mattel Creations really didn't do anything for me. So far this year, I really don't think that I have actually got anything <laughs> worthwhile from my Barbie Signature membership, but I always keep it just in case. Now, as you all know, I love the Barbie Looks collection, and I have loved every single wave that have come out of them so far, and I want this doll line to go on forever. Like, I never want it to end. Like, I want this to be the Barbie fashionistas for adult collectors, but something in me, I don't know what it is. I'm a little worried, and it could just be the pessimist in me, or it could be the fact that I'm just used to Mattel letting collectors down over and over and over again, but I don't know. I just feel like it's important for collectors to really make noise about this collection and let the corporate higher-ups at Mattel know, like, keep putting this out. Like these dolls have all been so beautiful and I love how they promote um, creativity in adult collectors by um, all the restyles that you see on social media. And they're extremely affordable so far. These ones are actually are a little bit more expensive than they have been in the past. They are $5 more than what they were originally. Barbie looks only uh, retailed at $20 and now they are all 25. And I'm not sure exactly why that is, if that's like the economy or what. I mean, 25 is still a good price for me. But once we start getting into the $30 price range, which is what BMR 1959 was, um, then I'm going to start being like, y'all better offer something else, like <laughs> some extra accessories or some extra fashion pieces or some socks or something to justify it being the price being lifted that much i mean that would be kind of ridiculous for these dolls even though to me they're worth it it's just i feel like 30 dollars would be a lot to ask for these um from collectors in general unless they're offering something extra with them because i feel like the price point was part of what killed bmr 1959 i mean on top of carlisle nuera's avant-garde fashion choices and i really urge you all if you like any of these particular dolls from this wave if you can buy them for what they are now don't wait until they go on sale or something because if we all do that then i i'm afraid the, that mattel will get the wrong message and be like Ugh, the hype's dying down and not like people are just trying to save money you know they they misinterpret things all the time like that um so i mean just like one or two you know i mean you don't have to be like me and get the entire wave but i mean i like them all so i'm gonna get them all <laughs> i will be the sole barbie collector to 
hype up and keep Barbie looks alive if I have to be. So in the spirit of that, let's go ahead and open up my Amazon package and get to look at Barbie looks wave four. Fun fact about me is that four is actually my favorite number. Will this be my favorite wave of Barbie looks? This time I just ordered one of each doll because I want to give everybody the opportunity to get theirs before I uh, order multiple, which I will in the future. I will be ordering um, more of these dolls um, because some of them I'm already seeing have a little bit of wonky facial screenings, but because these are made to move, they are also really good uh, body donors. Well, um, okay, this is something that is really throwing me off because uh, of all the pictures that I've seen of this collection, their new packaging, I thought they had like a holographic um, background, but this is actually, uh, it's like a faux holographic texture, which is a little bit disappointing um, to me, but I mean, it's it's the packaging. I mean, I'm not um, too concerned about it. It still looks beautiful, um, but I thought, I thought it was gonna be like shiny and holographic, but as you can see from the packaging of Barbie Looks Wave 4, these dolls have a sort of pastel metallic um like pearlescent theme i guess you could say but yeah their packaging is all very similar uh, they have the same uh faux uh holographic uh pattern in the background and maybe it's better that it's not shiny so that it doesn't take away from the doll um but they do all have different colored uh, logos at the bottom like, for example, you see Lena, she's got um, a blue logo, and Andra has a purple logo. And here is a look at the back of the packaging. And this is going to be important because the back actually has prototype images of these dolls. And there have been some changes made to this wave, uh, especially if you saw the early, early prototypes that I shared on my community tab um, that I will talk about later on in this video. But I think that this is the same um, description that they've all had. It says, Barbie Looks Way 4 is a curated collection of dolls, each with a fresh pastel look. Okay, this is unique. And style personality. The on-trend fashions feature photo-worthy details and with posable articulated bodies, they inspire the stylists with them. Okay, so part of it's reused and part of it's specific to this wave. The uh, Barbie Looks dolls are ready to style, pose, photograph, and post. Okay, so uh, like I said, this is definitely a doll line that is specifically targeted towards us. To adult doll collectors on social media that love to personalize and um, photograph our doll collection. As you can see, I, like, I, that's definitely me. <laughs> I redress, I rebody, I have dolls that are repainted and rerooted. Um, my dolls, especially my dolls, are very, very personal to me. I, I, every one of them has a story, and they're all standing there for their own particular reason. And I have almost every single Barbie Looks doll on display up there somewhere. I mean, admittedly, some of them I've liked more than others, but they're all beautiful dolls nonetheless. So here is a look at Barbie looks number 20. And this is Andra. That's the sculpt that she uses. These all, this whole collection uses uh, existing head sculpts. And that's okay to me because, you know, Barbie has a vast, vast catalog of head sculpts that have been curated for decades. And, um, if Barbie Looks continues after this line, we could see some head sculpts that haven't been used in in decades um, represented in this doll line. And this would be the perfect opportunity to bring some of them back and also get unique uh, interpretations of uh, head sculpts that were specifically made for Barbie Looks. Like the Andra head sculpt was specifically made for Barbie Looks. And this looks absolutely nothing like her debut doll. And that's something that I love is in this collection, we got um, 
Uh, several head sculpts that we've seen in the past, but they are used so differently. And that's something that I've told the designer is that I really appreciate the creativity. And I know that I'm not the only one, but Andra specifically is a fan favorite in this particular wave. Um, so let's go ahead and get her opened up out of her packaging so that I can get a good look at her. So here is Daphne, I mean, Barbie looks way for Andra, straight out of her packaging. And you can immediately tell why she is a fan favorite in this collection. I mean, look at her facial screening. She is absolutely gorgeous. She really does look like a runway model. Like she has that like old school, like smize that they used to do with their eye. Oh, I guess they still do that. I see the Kardashians doing that all the time, but um yes her facial screening is absolutely beautiful and whenever i saw promo images of her on the website it kind of looked like from uh the really good quality cameras that mattel has that she had like a silver like almost silver glittery eyeshadow and i guess she she does she kind of does have a uh a glittery finish on her uh, one of the shades of silver. There's multiple shades of silver on her upper eye, and I just think she looks absolutely gorgeous. And I love her eye color. I wonder, because it, to me, it kind of, it's like a gray, green, like greenish blue, and her eyebrow shape is also really, really unique. Um, her eyebrows, um, from how they're painted, they're painted very close to her, um, eyes like a lot more so than the original Andra and I have her right here just for comparison you see how much lower her uh, eyebrows are painted it almost changes her whole face shape just the eyebrows alone the new one does have a slightly less pale complexion but they're very very similar um I mean if you were worried about body donors uh just to let you know ahead of time this collection actually contains three original size mates move dolls no tall one curvy one petite and a uh a buff body ken um which i think is really weird because we've always got at least one tall barbie in each way bill greening said fuck tall barbie basically um which i think is a little sad i like tall barbie i mean she's not my first pick whenever i'm looking to rebody my um uh, fashionistas or whatever but back to her facial screening these dolls do not have the uh, pixelated resin that the fashionistas have for the most part which I think is great and it's something that I was worried about because you know in the last wave of BMR 1959 actually was one of the first Barbie lines ever the last wave of BMR 1959 was one of the first Barbie doll lines ever to have the uh, pixel face the UV resin and um that was really disappointing for uh that wave of bmr 1959 like if god forbid they ever start using it on barbie looks i'm gonna be like yeah this this line is dead officially but they don't have it thank goodness her dark red eyebrows match her beautiful uh red saran hair and her hair has different shades of um orange red and this like blonde color in it like this more blonde red it's it's got a lot of different tones in it actually i think the um lighter red is more so just at the front no okay so it, it does have some of that lighter red color at the back as well and that's one thing that i noticed about heidi's hair um the original heidi who i actually plan on having her rerouted at one point because i want i want her to have like a like little orphan annie uh curls and i tried to do it myself but I, I i didn't like how it turned out so i'm gonna have my original heidi rerouted um but she does have a very similar hair color to the original heidi barbie now whenever it comes to her outfit yes a lot of people were seeing her hair color combined with the purple and they immediately were reminded of daphne from scooby 2 i mean she she really does look like daphne to me, she kind of reminds me specifically of the Daphne from the early 2000s Scooby-Doo live action films. Something about like her face, I don't know. There, I think there's one scene in the live action movie where they do like a Kill Bill parody or something and I remember Daphne's eyes squinting and, and it reminds me of the expression she's making. But um, 
uh, in reference to earlier in the video, I was talking about how um, th there were changes made in the production of these dolls. And one of the changes was this doll was originally going to have a long sleeve crop top, um, as you can see in the prototype images. Um, unfortunately, the sleeves got cut. I don't know why. I mean, the obvious answer would be budget, but I guess that's fine. There is a Barbie extra doll with a similar colored uh, top that does have long sleeves that you could put on her if you wanted to. Um, it, it's, it's still disappointing. This top does Velcro in the back and it's very fitted to her. It still looks cute though. Um, I love her pencil skirt. And there's this like late 90s uh, like fashion brand that I know Bill Greening took inspiration from when designing this wave. And uh, this, this wave really, I mean, I can definitely see the inspiration, but to me, the skirt is just a little too long for that era. I feel like if it, I, I personally would have made it like this much shorter, like I would have cut this much off. Like, I definitely don't hate it as it is. I'm just saying if you're wanting to take inspiration from that era, Many skirts were in, definitely. Like, this was not the length of skirts for that decade. But I love this metallic uh, purple color that they're made in. The skirt also Velcros in the back. And even though this wave does not have any new face sculpts, they actually do have a lot of new shoe sculpts. So she has this uh, light lavender boot sculpt. This is definitely a new Barbie shoe sculpt. And I think they are absolutely beautiful. Now, they could have been made of a little bit uh, more hard plastic um, because they are uh, warping a little bit, as you can see. But you can dip them in some hot water to reset their shape if you, if you want to do that. But I really, really love this new boot sculpt. It kind of um, not only reminds me of Daphne, but kind of reminds me of Winx Club a little bit. Because um, uh, I remember a lot of those characters had these like high, high boots back then. I mean, it's the same decade. But yeah, Andra is definitely one of my favorites from this wave. And on the topic of unique interpretations of existing sculpts, here is Barbie Looks number 21. And she uses the Heidi head sculpt. Would you ever have guessed that she used the Heidi head sculpt? It looks absolutely nothing like Heidi's first appearance. A completely different skin tone, a different hair texture, a different facial screening. I mean, this is just the perfect example of what you can do with just one face sculpt. And I think that she looks absolutely beautiful. Now, Heidi is more of a Eurocentric face sculpt. Like, she definitely doesn't have as full of lips as most Afrocentric face sculpts. She doesn't have as wide of a nose. So... It's really up to you, like with all Barbie dolls, how you want to interpret this. You could say that she is mixed if you wanted to, but she is very beautiful regardless. And I love this face screening that they gave her. I love her eyes. Her eyebrows are so perfect. They have a little bit of detail in them, um, but I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that on my camera. They are a lot thinner than um, Heidi's original eyebrow shape, which I really appreciate. I mean, <laughs> both of these dolls just show like what you can do just by changing the eyebrow shape alone. And I love her um, eyes, like the brown color, and I love the neutral eyeshadow that they gave her as well. It's very, very beautiful. Her lipstick color is perfect. It matches the outfit very, very well. And they actually painted her on some edges on the um, on the top of her forehead, which I think look great. It's a detail that I didn't expect. Another thing that I didn't expect was to see a Barbie doll with braids in this wave, which the designer said that he did actually have to fight for them to allow him to have a doll in this collection with these braids because I'm sure they're um, more expensive than just giving her straight hair. Uh, but they look very beautiful, and I'm so glad that he fought to have this hair texture represented in this line. She has really, really nice rooting. Like, this is a thick, full head of hair, and she has a side parting up at the top. It's just such a beautiful face on this doll. Now, I mentioned earlier, she is the original size body. So for skin tone, 
I say she's very similar to the yellow top made smooth body. Actually, I want to check something real quick. So there's this really specific shade of Mates Move that I have wanted to tell to make for a long time, and it's the skin tone on the Barbie Extra Wave 1 doll. It's this very specific shade of a reddish brown, and does Heidi have it? I think, I mean, that's pretty close to me. Um, the Barbie Extra doll might be a little bit darker, just a pinch, though. Like, I mean, if I'm sure if you were to put um, her head on this body, you wouldn't even really notice the skin tone difference. But it's very close to Barbie Extra Wave 1, in case you have her for skin tone comparisons. And moving on to her outfit, she also has a very, very beautiful outfit. Now, I kind of wish that each one of these dolls had a metallic element to them. Because uh, unfortunately, uh, her skirt, while it's very beautiful, it's this really glossy um, pink color. I wish it was kind of a metallic pink, like Andra's was, just to have some sort of cohesiveness. And a lot of these other dolls in this collection have like glitter or metallic um, elements in their outfits. And this one doesn't, unfortunately. So I would have preferred a metallic pink for her skirt, but it is really cute. I love this little cutout on the um, bottom, and I appreciate that it is hemmed all the way through. They didn't cheap out on any of that, and I like the length of it. I definitely, like, this is the length that Andra's skirt should have been to me. And her top is also very beautiful. It's this lighter, uh, like, pastel pink color, and uh, Bill Greening, he, like, worded, like, he described this as, like, a keyhole cut at the top. I think it's really cute. I, I think this is really popular in the 2000s, definitely. I like how it goes around her neck. I'm kind of... Okay, so the top strap is connected to the back, and it all Velcros in one piece. That's good. I'm glad that the top collar wasn't like a separate entity or anything. And... As far as her shoes go, she comes with a mini boot sculpt that is also new, and I think they're beautiful as well. I love how they kind of have this, like, crunchy texture at the top. They're very, very cute, and they match the skirt perfectly. I'm also very happy with the screening on the one that I received specifically. I think that hers is pretty symmetrical, so I might actually end up keeping this one. Now, moving on to another one of my favorite dolls in this wave, we have Barbie Looks number 22, and she uses the Victoria face sculpt. And my opinion on this girl has really done a complete 180, because at first, I didn't know how I was going to feel about her, but whenever I then saw images of her in real life, I actually like her a lot better than the um, prototype images. And like I said earlier, the back of the box does use prototype images for this doll. So I asked the designer for a little bit of clarification on this because I knew it wasn't just me. The back of the box shows this doll having a buzz cut on the sides, like her sides were flocked, like kits were. Uh, you know, Kit from Barbie Looks Wave 1, she had like basically the exact same hairstyle. And what I didn't know is that if you all have heard of the European ban on glitter that happened last year, I believe, that also um, accounted for the flocking powder. The flocking powder that they use on Barbie and Ken heads sometimes. Um, so they actually changed her design kind of last minute to have this full rooted um, pixie cut instead of having it be like a half shaved head. And actually, I kind of like that they made that change because I think that the pixie cut is actually super, super cute on her. Um, now it is gelled down to like no end. Like, her head might as well have had sculpted hair. But this is one of those rare cases where I actually like the change from the prototype because the re I like that, like, sh side shave hair style that they sometimes give Collector Barbies, but I was disappointed with it on her because she was petite, like Kit was, and for her to have the same hairstyle as Kit, I, I feel like that was a little bit lazy. Um, so I'm happy that they did change it. 
and she looks very cute. Now, definitely she looks a lot different than the original Victoria because the original Victoria had a very pale skin tone. And this one has a more tan complexion. I want to say um, it's close to that skin tone on the green top uh, Mates Move Barbie. Maybe not quite. I got Tiffany back there, actually. She's got that body. So as you can see, it is very, very close. Like, she might be a little bit more rosy than brown, but it's very close to the green uh, tie-dye Mates Move Barbie. So that's cool. Now, I have made it very clear on here that I am a huge fan of the Petite Mates Move Barbie. I just love it. I think it looks so cute. Um, but I'm a little bit disappointed with the skin tone on this one. Like, it's not all that different than the skin tone that we got on the America Ferreira. Barbie doll from the Barbie movie, who also had a petite mates move body. Uh, so I hope that if they do more waves of Barbie looks in the future, that we get more petite skin tones that are ones that are different, significantly different than what we have seen already. Personally, I really, really need a uh, new celestial skin tone in this body type. I've said that before, but I'll keep saying it until they do it. In regards to her facial screening, I really love what they did with her eyeshadow. It looks to me like they like they spray painted or stamped on like a dark eye eyeshadow color around her eyes, and then put all of like like the sclera and the eyeliner over that because it looks like almost. <laughs> I, I mean, I know it's supposed to look like dark eyeshadow, but it almost kind of looks like she's sleep deprived a little bit. <laughs> like this is kind of like um, like an early 2000s uh, Avril Lavigne style eyeshadow. Maybe not that dark, but I have seen some variants of her that have had darker eyeshadow, but I kind of love it. I, I, think it, I think it looks really cool. I love her eyebrow shape and her lipstick is the absolute perfect color of a neutral pinkish color that won't really interfere with any outfit that I put her in and her hair is such a unique shape like it's got it's it's a blend it's got like a brown color and then also this like it's like a it's like a warm brown and then like a more desaturated brown that almost kind of looks gray it's so it's so unique I've never seen a hair blend on a doll like this before, but I think it looks really cool. And of course, I love how they have it styled. Now, as far as her outfits, um, she comes with this uh, one piece outfit. This is all one piece of Velcros on the back um, that is perfectly fitted to this body. I really love how it cuts around her shoulders at the top. It's like a silver and pink material, but it's very reflective. Like I said, a lot of metallic and like jewel essence um, elements in this wave. Um, and there's a lot that I can see myself doing with this one piece. Like you could, if you wanted to, you could cut off the legs and then like put a skirt here instead. Uh, I could see somebody like layering this with a jacket or also like a mesh undershirt with long sleeves. I mean, there's just so much you could you could do when styling this. Speaking of which, there's some Barbie uh, style fashion packs that are going to be coming out um, here, I think in a few days, actually. So let me know if you all would like a review of those fashion packs. Her shoes, though, are really underwhelming for me. I don't believe that this is a new shoe sculpt. I swear I've seen them before. Yeah, the shoes are a little underwhelming, but that doesn't stop her from being absolutely adorable. Now, moving on to one of my favorite dolls from this wave. We have Barbie Looks number 23, I believe. Yeah, 23. And she is the one that uses the Lena face sculpt. And um, this one I actually probably like the least. And that is only because the Lena face sculpt, I love her, but she's very quickly become one of the most overused face sculpts in the Barbie Looks line as far as use outside of Barbie looks and even in Barbie looks, because she's like in every way that feels like. And she is a beautiful face sculpt and I love her so much, but she is also gonna be used in the Rebel Day doll line that Mattel is gonna be putting out. And the doll that they are releasing with her sculpt in that line is also 
blonde. And the Rebel de Lina has a much more unique uh, facial screening than this one does. This one just looks very generic. I mean, she's beautiful, but it's also, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's more boring. It, it just looks, it feels safe to me. It's just too safe. Um, and I just think that the Rebel de Lina might end up replacing this Barbie Looks Lena in my collection, at least. She's really pretty though. She's got some beautiful blue eyes and this very, very long uh, saran hair, uh, a very light blonde color. She is basically like new neutra. Like you could say she's like the Millie in this collection. And she comes wearing this outfit that is like a mini dress that's sort of like an asymmetrical over the shoulder at the top and it velcros on the back. It's fitted really nice to her. It's just you can tell that like, maybe this was the point of it. Like you look at it and you're like, it's missing something. Like I gotta pair something with it. Like maybe that's the psychology of it because like I can definitely see myself working the stress into an outfit, but by itself, I, I don't know if that would be enough for me. Um, I like a lot more layers than that. But I do love the material that it was made out of. I love this shiny um, blue fabric. Like, I don't know that I've ever really seen a fabric like this before. It's so unique. Very beautiful. Um, the material is a little stiff, but it's also soft. It's kind of hard to describe, actually. And the shoes that she comes with, I know this is not a new shoe sculpt. Actually, I think the first Lena that ever came out might have actually used the shoe sculpt. Um, it's cute and it matches the dress, but I don't know. She's just really underwhelming for me. And it's got nothing to do with the fact that she's white, okay? I have nothing against white people. I have a white friend, actually. Like, don't get me wrong. I love cheese and crackers, but I just like my facial screenings on my dolls to have a little bit more spice to them. So the Rebel de Lina, the white Latina, um, well, I guess this could also be a Blanquita. Um, she'll probably be the one to replace this Lena in my collection. Now, moving on to another one of my favorites in this collection, and who might actually be the most controversial doll in this wave, like whether people like her or not. It's like whether it's like people either really like this doll or they really don't. It's Barbie Extra. Oh my God, rest in peace. I mean, Barbie looks number 24. But me, I personally love this doll. I didn't know how I was going to feel about her at first, especially with the lack of makeup. Um, I mean, I guess she could be wearing lipstick, or that might just be her natural lip color. But in person, I love her a lot more than I did in the promo images. This is also a really unique interpretation of an existing face sculpt, as she uses the Simone face sculpts from, uh, I think it was Wave 2 that Simone originally debuted in. Like, she is just the epitome of ambiguity. Like, I could, I definitely see her as being mixed. Like, I've seen a lot of Mestiza Latinas that have had fuller, fuller lips like this and that have had wider, wider noses and almost, like, Asian-looking eyes. She could also be mixed with Asian. A lot of people have been saying that they see her as a light-skinned black woman, or they could also see her as a person who has both European and African ancestry, or she uh, has some of the facial features, but just not a lot of melanin. Um, and that would also explain the hair being straight. But, I mean, in your doll world, she might not even have this as her natural hair texture. So it's, it's just up to how you want to interpret her, interpret her. And that's kind of the beauty of Barbie. It's like you can make your own backstory. And I and I love dolls like this that look really am, ambiguous. And that's part of the reason why I got into Barbie is I just love um, the, the representation that they were doing in the mid 2010s whenever it came to uh, mixed race people. And to me, this is a mixed race doll. And another controversial aspect about her was the bangs. I think they're cute though. I really like these bangs. On mine, at least, they were cut pretty straight. And I think that this brown hair color they gave her was also really beautiful. Um, it is also a mix of a, a couple shades of brown 
and it is Saran. Her facial screening I definitely like a lot more now that I have her in person. She sort of has like an almond shaped eye and I love her eyebrows. They are kind of thick um, if you can see them poking out from under her bangs and her pink lips look like they could either be lipstick or like she just has some lip gloss on. Um, her outfit is also really cute. Now she's on the curvy body. She's the only curvy body doll from the suede that we have. And this is a skin tone that we have definitely seen in the past. This uh, new Nutra uh, skin tone, which is, there's a lot of dolls that are released with a skin tone. So I guess it is kind of valuable. So I guess that could have been one of the reasons why they chose this skin tone is just because since a lot of dolls are made with it, um, more people would be inclined to buy her as a body donor if they wanted to. Um, but she comes wearing this, uh, just this little sparkly party dress. I think it's so cute. Um, I love this silver trim around the top that actually does go all the way around. And this uh, also Velcros, it's got these clear straps to hold it on her uh, shoulders. And it just looks so cute to me. Oh, <laughs> actually a surprising detail about her is that under the dress, she actually has a strap um, to keep it from uh, going too far up, which I think is really cool. Like this is a an element we don't get in play lines, so it makes her feel more um, like a collector doll to me. Now she does actually have a new shoe sculpt. Bill Greening specifically did say that uh, this uh, little uh, heel sculpt with these little, uh, he called them peekaboo peek cut in the front where you can kind of see her uh, the front of her foot um, inside of the shoe is a new shoe sculpt and I really like it. I'd like to see some painted elements like uh, these like hardware like the buckles on the sides but I've been really getting into using acrylic pens to paint on details on Barbie accessories lately so that's something that I can easily fix. It'd be cool if it came like that where I didn't wouldn't have to or that where I wouldn't feel inclined to have to add something myself. But all in all, I love this design and I love that he made her curvy. I always thought that the Simone head sculpt because of how round it was would look good on the curvy body and I was right. It looks great on this curvy body. I think it might actually fit her more than the original body that she came with. I just love the Simone head sculpt so much. She's got such beautiful cheekbones. Now moving on to the last and actually one of my favorites. I've, I've been doing that on purpose because it, it's true. They are all my favorites. Um, this is Barbie Looks number 25 and he is the last doll in Barbie Looks Wave 4. And this wave we unfortunately only got one Ken doll. Whereas in the past each wave of Barbie Looks we've got at least two. Um, this wave, we only got one. And the simple answer as to why that is, is just a simple, the Ken dolls just don't sell as well as the female Barbie dolls. Um, like there just isn't enough gay men in the world to where Mattel would want to add multiple Ken dolls to this collection. I'm kidding, I know gay men aren't the only ones buying these dolls. There's a lot of female collectors that also like to buy Ken dolls for their Barbies as well. Um, but yes, I am disappointed we didn't get another Ken doll in this wave. It would be cool if they gave us a deluxe doll in this wave and had it be a male Barbie doll. That would be really cool. Um, but I am very satisfied with the one that we did get. Um, so this guy, he does not use any of the Barbie Looks Ken head sculpts. He actually uses the Barbie Basics uh, Black Ken head sculpt. I mean, that's literally what it is called on the Mattel website. You know, the head sculpt that we saw on the Texas A&M can, and also the black version of the Barbie Power Pair doll set that Carlisle designed a couple years ago. Now, I was really hoping that Mattel would give this guy an actual name uh, whenever he got released in this collection, instead of just calling him Barbie Basics Black Ken. Because the other Barbie Basics head sculpts, you know, the two um, more Eurocentric looking ones, they both have their own names. Well, they're, they're nicknames, but they're still names. They're not like Barbie Basics White Ken. Like one of them is called Harley because he was also used on a Harley Davidson doll set. And the other one is called Tango because he came in a early 2000s um, 
a doll set with another doll and they were doing the tango and um so they both have their own nicknames i think that for this guy if we were to give him an like an official name that we could name him tex after the fact that one of his debut dolls was the university of texas ken the african-american version after university of texas we could call him tex i mean to me that's perfect i mean it references one of his original dolls that he debuted on and it's an actual name i have known people named tex before um and it's just better to me than calling him Barbie Basics Black Ken. So let me know in the comments section what you think of that name for this head sculpt. And if Mattel keeps doing this thing where they're not giving proper names to head sculpts that they use on Barbie signature dolls, I'm about to be at that point where I'm gonna make the executive decision as Barbie's GBF and give them names myself. Like I'll do polls on here and we'll come up with our own names that we'll use until Mattel gets their shit together and actually assigns names to these head sculpts. Cause that is just so pathetic to me that they didn't even bother to come up with something, like anything for this guy. Um, but I love that he made a reappearance in the Barbie looks line. And I love this interpretation of this head sculpt. He's got a lot more of a darker complexion than his original doll. This one, unfortunately, does have some wonk eye, so I will have to order another one that's got a better facial screening, but that just means I'll be able to use this guy as a body donor. I love the facial screening that he does have. I mean, I'd like it if it was painted on straight, um, but I, I think he looks really handsome. I love his thick eyebrows. His lip color is perfect, and the sculpt overall is very beautiful, though, one thing that I'm noticing about it is, do you all see this seam at the back of his head? I don't think that's always been there. I think that this sculpt might have been updated at one point because there's a very noticeable seam on this bottom part of his head sculpt as if they changed, like they widened the opening or something because I, he, he was on the Barbie, actually, I have him right up here, so let me see. This is the original Texas A&M Ken doll. Uh, you can see he's got the articulation that uh, the Texas doll came with, and he does not have that seam at the back of his head. And also, the text, the text is different on the back of his head. It's smaller on the original Texas A&M Ken. So they've made alterations to this head sculpt. So if they make alterations to it, they can give it a new name. <laughs> but um, they both have the same copyright date on it, I believe. It's just the font on the back of this head sculpt is uh, a lot bigger than it originally was. So that's interesting. But this is essentially the same face sculpt. As you can see, he does have a lot more of a dark complexion. And he actually does have partially rooted hair. And like I was mentioning earlier when we were talking about Victoria, because of the ban on the flocking powder, uh, his hairstyle doesn't have a uh, flock side. It actually is just painted on. So this is something that the designer could not control unfortunately like this isn't them being cheap this is just them having to abide by the law um but the hairstyle that he came with out of the box if i were to keep this one it would need a little work because i feel like it's a little bit of a mess i love the hair texture on top but i think that this hairstyle was supposed to be more so like it's like a fade kind of is what it's supposed to look like and I don't think that the front part is supposed to be separated like this. Like, let me see if I can even really do anything with it. Because I might have to add some gel. I, I hope that the one that I get with a nice facial screening doesn't have hair like this. Because it almost feels like this middle part is shorter. Like, it's literally just shorter than the sides. That didn't help at all. But he kind of has that, like, 2020 TikTok e-boy hairstyle going on and I still think that that hairstyle is really cute um 
but I just hope that I'm eventually able to get a better one where I don't have to do so much work to get his hair presentable. And even though we did just get one Ken doll in this wave, I believe he is going to still be very popular because I know a lot of people really love this new buff body body type, the um, Mates Move version of the Batman vs. Superman muscular body. And this skin tone, I think it's the same as Barbie Looks Wave 1 John. And that's one head sculpt that we haven't seen in a while. They haven't used John yet again. Um, but this is his skin tone, basically, except just in the um, buff body. So if you wanted to give Wave 1 John muscles, you could do that now. Um, but I love this body type personally, though I have found that finding um, bottoms to fit him can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes. Um, this doll does come with uh, two outfit pieces. He comes with a chartreuse or light green colored uh, shirt. It's just a plain t-shirt. I mean, really safe. It velcros in the back. doesn't really have any graphic or anything on it. Like, he doesn't have any, unless you count his shoes, he doesn't really have any metallic elements to him either. So it would have been cool if he had, like, shiny pants or something. His pants that he comes with are specifically fitted to this body, and they are a light lavender color. They do have um, some pocket detail up at the top, which is very appreciated. And um, he also comes with a new shoe sculpt. He comes with these uh, silver boots that... I mean, they have to be a new shoe sculpt because this body does have bigger feet than the normal Ken Mates Move body does. I think the shoes are cool, personally. I think I would also paint some, like, maybe I'd paint these, like, uh, sculpted edges white or something just to give it a little bit more detail. But I, I like the shoe sculpt, and I appreciate that we got at least a new shoe sculpts in this wave. But this guy is super, super handsome. He really is a tall glass of water. Let me know what you all think of the one Ken that we got in Barbie Looks Wave 4. And if we were to get a second Ken in this line, what would you want him to look like? I think personally what would be cool is, well, obviously I would like more Made to Move Ken body types, like a broad and a slim Ken, but we still haven't got like a uh, like a really pale skinned East Asian Ken in Barbie looks yet, so I'd like to see that represented. And you know we've got a lot of ginger female dolls in Barbie looks, but we've never got a ginger. Well, have they even really made a ginger male Barbie fashionista? I don't think they have. But a ginger Ken doll would also be cool to see. But let me know what is your favorite doll from Barbie Looks Way 4 and why is it Andra? And assuming that there are future waves of Barbie Looks, what other head sculpts from either Barbie's past or uh, Barbie Looks head sculpts that they really haven't reused that much before, would you like to see make a return? Personally, I think that Frida, poor girl, she needs another doll quick like more than any other head sculpt her and kit l could use another one tamika could use another one all the male dolls cam and sean and john they could all use more representation um so that's why i'm really hoping that this line continues forever and ever and ever like i never want to be alive ever whenever this line isn't going <laughs> like i cannot live in a world where they aren't making new barbie look stalls i know like i haven't really been gone for that long like in youtube years it might feel like forever but it's just been a few weeks and i already have so much to follow up on like i have so many dolls that i've got at thrift stores that i, I need to unbox like I really want to do a video. I was finally able to order the Dia de Muertos. They dropped them to a actual Latino safe price on Amazon recently. So I was able to get them finally. Um, but I've got a lot of dolls to look at and I hope to get to a regular uploading schedule very soon. So if you all like this content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help me out in the ever-changing algorithm. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye.